Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night. And a uh, special guest in studio this week, Truth Martini and Michael Elgin, as we preview Best in the World, which is this Sunday on pay-per-view. We've also got the latest from WWE, TNA, and Impact Wrestling, along with SmackDown and this week's Star of the Week. The Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night starts right now, right here on My24 Milwaukee. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night. Damian Nelson here without David Hero because he's got two very suitable replacements this week as we get ready to talk about this Sunday's internet pay-per-view event, Best in the World. I think I'm pleased to have joining me Truth Martini and Michael Elgin. Both will be participating actively in this Sunday's Best in the World on pay-per-view. Gentlemen, welcome here to the studios for the Pro Wrestling Report. Uh, thank you very much. It is your pleasure. And thank you for that introduction, but it wasn't quite proper. The proper introduction is I am the TV super duper King Kong mega mega managerial sensation and life intervention expert but you can call me the one. The one. <laughs> life intervention Yo. expert. Yes sir. Unbreakable Michael Elgin. My apologies again. My apologies. See the, the interns didn't put that in my notes so I, I wasn't aware but I, I did know that you were Truth Martini, a life interventionist. That's and right. later in this episode, I've got some time I want you to spend with David Hero, the opinionist of this program, because he has been living by the book of lies. Ah, so I he needs a little that. truth in that. his life. But let's get Not down to problem. business. This Sunday, internet pay-per-view from New York City, Hammerstein Ballroom. It is Best in the World 2012. And one of the big matchups is for the television championship, and it features Roderick Strong going up against Jay Lethal versus the Sicilian psychopath Tommaso Chiampa, it's a three-way dance. Three-way dance. I'm looking very forward to that because Roderick Strong gets to show you and the entire world what he's all about. Now, also, maybe you guys have heard by now, he is the founder and leader of Camp Strong. Now, people always want to know, what is Camp Strong all about? What is it all about? Well, think about it. What makes Roderick Strong tick? Camp, C-A-M-P. C, competition. A, Alcohol, oh. M, money, and P, <laughs> That's a good camp to be in. Oh, it's a great camp, <laughs> I'll tell you. Being in that camp this Sunday at uh, Best in the World, Roderick Strong is going to come out still, uh, or come out to victor in that matchup uh, with, uh, with, with all that behind him. I'm still taken aback by what camp means. I wasn't oh, ready for that's that. That's great. It's great. It's I great. didn't know he liked uh, kittens so much. Oh, I'm sure we all do. <laughs> <laughs> Another matchup, Michael Elgin, you're going to be unbreakable against Fit Finley in a big matchup on this Sunday's Best of the World on pay-per-view. What should we expect in that matchup with you and a very tough Fit Finley? You, you know, Fit Finley is tough. Not only that, he's a legend of the sport. But legends, they come and they go. See, every man wants to be a legend, and now's my time, and Fit Finley's going to learn that in New York City. Hammerstein Ballroom, Sunday night. It is best in the world. You can get that on internet pay-per-view, rohwrestling.com. There That's are right. several more matchups. We're going to talk about those in PWR Extra, but one more match I want to talk about tonight is a tag team battle. It is the Guardians of Truth, represented by you, <laughs> versus Jay and Mark Briscoe, <laughs> Dem Boys, on pay-per-view. Dem Boys, or as I like to call them, a bunch of chicken farmers. Dem Boys... I hate you, but also think about this. Ring of Honor, I've been here for three years now and every year I've changed the face of Ring of Honor. Year one, with Roderick Strong, he became the Ring of Honor world champion. Year two, this man, unbreakable Michael Elgin, he is now the breakout star of 2012. The face of Ring of Honor was changed once again and this time, the Guardians of Truth, because now I want Tag Team Gold. And the Briscoe Brothers, you're just going to be a stepping stone to, for us to get to that level. All that happens this Sunday. It's Best in the World on pay-per-view. The main event, of course, it is Davey Richards versus Kevin Steen. Davey Richards' last title shot for the Ring of Honor Championship. These two uh, wanted a no-holds-barred, no-holds-qualification kind of matchup. And we're going to see either of you uh, get involved with that. 
No, 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 no. That has nothing to do with us. But I'll tell you what, and for all you fans, very excited about that match. They're going to go all out. I guarantee you that. But no matter who wins, they're holding what's mine, and that's the Ring of Honor World title. <laughs> That is true. The coveted Ring of Honor World Championship on the line, and uh, you have heard now from two big participants in that big pay-per-view event available at ROHWrestling.com this Sunday from New York's Hammerstein Ballroom. It is Best in the World 2012 from Ring of Honor Wrestling, rave reviews for Best in the World 2011 last year, and even going back, one of the uh, premier wrestling pay-per-view events that you can get your hands on that available on the internet this Sunday from Ring of Honor Wrestling.com. Truth, we're going to see you later on in this program when you confront or David Hero attempts to explain to you why he lives by the book of lies. Michael Elgin, good luck this Sunday in the pay-per-view matchup with Fit Finley and we'll talk to you guys in just a moment here on the Pro Wrestling Report but before we take a time out let's go now to Frank Cosentino the Cos who is at Karma Barn Grill with this week's temperature check. It's the summertime and it's the time for the temperature check. This week's temperature check is on last week's No Way Out. I'm with Lewis from Milwaukee. Lewis, last week's No Way Out. Hot? Cold? What do you think? Uh, that's a hard one, but I'll just say it's, it was hot. It was hot. Why is that? Uh, I really enjoy the CM Punk, uh, the whole feud that's going on. The Sheamus and uh, Dolph Ziggler one was, you know, it was a good way to start it off. Uh, the ending, it was a little bit, um, not too sure, but I'll still say hot. Victor, Milwaukee, temperature check, no way out. Hot, cold, what do you think? Cold. Why is that? Well, I just like the ending. The ending did it for you. Yeah. There you go, from Victor. Guys, back to the studio. Ring of Honor Wrestling is live in Milwaukee at the Turner Hall Ballroom, 1032 North 4th Street, on Saturday, July 14th at 7.30 p.m. The Briscoe Brothers face Kevin Steen and Jimmy Jacobs in a tag team war. Diehard Eddie Edwards goes one-on-one -on -one with the Man Beast Rhino. You'll see Jay Lethal, Roderick Strong, Michael Elgin, and more in seven big matches. Great seats start at $20. For tickets and info, go to ROHWrestling.com and be there for the action on July 14th. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night here on My24 Milwaukee. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero. Yes. Hi. You know, it felt so good doing that first you know, segment without you, you. You bring guests on. My sheets aren't in order. You're, I'm rushed. It's hot in here. I love how quickly you make it about you, though. Well, Let's go into this segment. week's WWE Raw report, and it was a week that was highlighted by the firing of John Laurinaitis and several big returns to WWE, one of which we knew would happen, who we hadn't seen in WWE for a long time, Cindy Lauper, but we didn't expect to see Rowdy Roddy Piper and many others. Well, yeah, Rowdy Roddy Piper. You love that segment. I love. You know why I loved it? Because if you were a wrestling fan, fan from the 80s, that those three people, Wendy Richter, Cindy Lauper, Roddy Piper helped make the rock and wrestling connection happen. And they're revitalizing it with Heath Slater, the one-man rock band. Well, you know what? I understand they're trying to get Heath Slater more involved, find something for him. But the fans in Long Island booing those three legends. It was rather disappointing. 
almost hashtag hurtful. Arguably, they probably needed a little bit of a refreshment as to who Wendy Richter was, which I think WWE tried to give well, they with did. the video package. I mean, they had the little vignette and everything, and it was, you know what? It was well put together. Unfortunately, the fans today aren't the same fans as the 80s. The respect level quite isn't there, and they were just all cheering for CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Michael Cole during that segment, you had some comments about him as well. He was a bit obnoxious. Yeah, you know, I understand that Vince McMahon, he's in the, he's in the, in the earpiece for Michael Cole. But it's at times, you just have to give them a little bit more respect than what, than what they were given. I thought Michael Cole, he's obnoxious. He reminds me of you most of the time. But he was way over the top on Monday night during that segment. Big Show and David Otunga both walk out on John Laurinaitis during the uh, two-on-one match that they had with John Cena. Three-on-one match, rather, that they had with John Cena. John Cena gives uh, John Laurinaitis not one, not two, but three double A's. You know, they really beat up Johnny Ace, didn't, didn't they? they? They were giving him chops to the back, chops to the front. I mean, they, they put the boots to Johnny Ace. I guess for me, the part that was a little puzzling is if Otunga and Big Show are the heels, by them leaving Johnny Ace, almost got a decent crowd reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not too sure if that, you know, I mean, it's not going to hurt their character development because they are feuding with, jo with uh, John Cena. But it almost didn't make sense to have that match. They're almost better off just having it a one-on-one -on -one match with Johnny Ace and, and uh, John Cena. Speaking of one-on-one, -on -one, it was Paul Heyman and uh, Triple H one-on-one -on -one face to face in the middle of the ring, and Paul Heyman showed just how great he is, at least vocally, again against Triple H, and it was the mention of his wife Stephanie that caused Triple H to get aggressive. You know, both guys are great on the stick. They can both cut a promo, and you know what? It's almost like they really don't like each other, and you can almost feel that the way, the way it comes across TV. You know what, if you ever want to get somebody upset, just bring up their wife or girlfriend. It's guaranteed to cause a problem. Smart, though, because they're not leaping into the acceptance of this match by Brock Lesnar or his camp against Triple H at SummerSlam. If they're going to carry this out for a little if while. If you're Brock Lesnar, why do you really care if Triple H well, he's beats He's on the poster. Up? But why do you care if Triple H beats up Paul Heyman? Paul Heyman, obviously, is the man in his ear and right. is going to convince right. him. But if he has the lawsuits, he's going to get paid regardless. Speaking of getting paid, AJ should have gotten paid for her performance as Kane as she pranced around the ring during that matchup with him and CM Punk and Daniel Bryan uh, on uh, Raw this past She Monday was night. more Harley Quinn than she was AJ Lee. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, the amazing thing is, is once again, the WWE machine has the ability to make you forget about Kelly Kelly, the Ooh. Bellas, Kelly all the Kelly's other divas back, that have left, and they have now made AJ one of the top divas in the company. Speaking of being one of the top in the company, it seems like the rise of Dolph Ziggler may be continuing, not only on SmackDown last night, but also on Raw this past Monday night as he defeated Jack Swagger. But what was key, I thought, was Dolph Ziggler saying before the matchup that he was the it factor. Well, yeah, because Bobby Roode calls himself the it factor, but I'm sure they don't think of Bobby Roode when, they, <laughs> you know, when they're in their um, creative meetings. Dolph Ziggler, as talented as he is, and I've said this many times, they need to do something special with him. Him beating Jack Swagger doesn't do any good when you go out and lose to Sheamus four days later. Overall, this past Monday night, Raw, your thoughts? Um, you know what? I think it was a good way of cleaning up where they have to go going into the next pay-per-view, which is Money in the Bank even though they're almost skipping past that and going towards SummerSlam with Triple H and Brock Lesnar. But, uh, you know, it was a passable show. That's this week's WWE Raw Report. And as you know, each week the Pro Wrestling Report is down at Karma Bar and Grill during the live broadcast of TNA Impact Wrestling at 600 East Ogden. Uh, this past Thursday, we were there again as well. And uh, let's go now to our pre-recorded footage, David Hero, down at Karma, talking about this week's Impact Wrestling. You know, I so much love throwing to myself. Damian Nelson, David Hero, we're here at Karma Bar and Grill, where we just got done watching the live broadcast of TNA Impact Wrestling, and we found out at the end of the broadcast that there was no affair between Dixie Carter and AJ Styles, but they were helping a junkie. Of course not. AJ Styles is of high moral ground and fiber, helping the world get better, be a better place. You know what? That's a true intervention. Unlike that shenanigans, you know, you try to pull with me. Well, that'll be uh, later on in this broadcast where Truth Martini will uh, intervene in your life. Yeah, I don't need no help. 
should this end? Did it go in the right direction? Is it in the right place? Everyone was expecting Dixie to spill the beans, if you will, on the affair she was having with AJ Styles. That, of course, not the case. And it's sort of almost a dud with this either swerve or this different story about what's going on and why the two have been involved. Well, I don't know if it was the right way to end a Tina Impact Pro Wrestling tonight. I mean, for me, I was rather... Championship. Right, Tina Impact Championship Pro Wrestling, or whatever you want to call it. I was hoping to see who were the guys that beat down Sting. What happened with that angle? Well, Hulk Hogan said he's not going to show the footage, he's not going to talk about it, and uh, giving a little bit of realism to that whole situation with the three guys that did beat down Sting at the end of Impact last week. Do you think there should have been more follow-up, though, David Hero? Because that was the big cliffhanger ending to last week's Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. I mean, why not have somebody snoop around, ask the question, see what's going snoop? on? Doggy Snoop dog? App, well, Snoopy, For schnizzle, you know, my hizzle. Snoopy is a beagle. You knew that, right? No, he's a he's a he's a he's a Doberman. Well, no. Well, what I'm saying is that they had a chance to further that storyline, at least tease something, and they didn't do any any teasing whatsoever. There was a lot of the Bound for Glory series, though, tonight on Impact. We found out that the man in the lead is James Storm with 27 points. He got a big victory over Samoa Joe tonight. Sub a couple of surprising victories, though, most surprising being Magnus's victory over AJ Styles. No, no, no. I think the most surprising victory was the Pope getting a, getting a, a pinfall victory. Why is that more surprising than Magnus beating AJ Styles? Because Why is that more surprising? Magnus is a former TNA Impact World Wrestling Champion. Tag team, Tag as is... Well, the Pope was maybe, oh. Exactly. The Pope hasn't done anything for quite a while. But for him to beat the top heel in the company, Bully Ray, why are you shaking your Because we need to create a hero hate list. You put Dolph Ziggler on there. You put Cody Rhodes on there. You put Zack Ryder on there. You put the Pope on there. Why so much hate in this body? It's not hate. And plus, there's a lot of body to fill with hate. I don't hate the Pope. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it was the big upset shock win of the night. Austin Aries relinquishes the TNA X Division Championship in the hopes of getting a shot at Bobby Roode and makes a rule going forward. Did he and Hulk Hogan that the X Division Champion can always relinquish the title to get a world title shot? You know, I like the theory of it. I like the idea of it. Do I think it's going to work? I'm not too sure, simply because now what's to stop every... TNA Impact Wrestling X Division Champion from winning the belt one night and then giving it up four days later on Impact. Isn't that what makes it intriguing? It's almost like the Hardcore Championship back when Crash Holly had it. Not really, but it's almost like a permanent money in the bank is what it is. It's like now that title becomes money in the bank where you're guaranteed a title shot. The TNA gut check occurred tonight, on open fight night rather, and uh, it was Taylor Hendricks who took on Tara in a contest tonight. Taylor looked pretty good. You know what? It, it was, she looks good. I don't know if that was the right match for her. Add Taylor Hendricks to the list, ladies and gentlemen. No, there is no list. There's a list. It's in that little black book over there. Well, Frank's got it. Well, well, of course, of course she would be in Frank's little black book. You know, it's so hard because Diva and Knockout Wrestling is always criticized, and I give Tina credit for putting a knockout in that spot to see where she can go. Unfortunately, she had to go in the room with Tara, who's one of the best, you know, of all time, a tremendous talent. Almost at times, it seemed to expose uh, Taylor Hendricks. The takeaways from Impact tonight, there is no affair between Dixie Carter and AJ Styles, and Hulk Hogan has gotten his answer from AJ Styles. No sting, Austin no Aries. answer there. I'm sorry, from Austin Aries. Uh, Brooke Hogan trying to get some, uh, I guess, some action out of the uh, knockouts, sending ODB packing, if you will, out of her office, Hogan's office, whichever it might be. Uh, good impact well, tonight. A <laughs> good impact tonight from my standpoint. How about you, D Double? You know what? I thought it was, a, it was another solid offering by TNA Impact Championship Wrestling. The only thing I wish is they would have had more with Sting. And maybe that'll be next week when Impact is live again. That's this week's TNA Impact Championship Professional Wrestling Report. Still to come, though, here on the Pro Wrestling Report, we're going to talk about last night's WWE SmackDown, and also this guy has a confrontation with Truth Martini from Ring of Honor Wrestling. He's got the book of truth. What were you doing? I'm not doing anything. He's got the book of truth. You've got the book of spin. I got the Who will win? Yes. That's still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Prime time right here on My24 Milwaukee.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime Saturday night. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Hero. And uh, it's time now to go to this week's WWE SmackDown Report. And last night's broadcast uh, kicked off with the big show, Brodus Clay and David Otunga, mixing it up quite a bit with uh, Otunga left standing tall. Once a, Otunga left standing tall. Well, on the big show. He, because he's dancing? Well, Brodus knocked out the big show with a headbutt. Well, but Brodus he had didn't dance on TV. No, Stop but reading the spoilers. I'm not reading any spoilers. I'm reading the, the, the notes you put in front of me. Brodus Clay was missed on Raw. They bring him back on SmackDown. Because that's his brand. And obviously, you can tell they're going towards a big show Brodus Clay program, which means where's John Cena going to be? Eh, doesn't matter. Dolph Ziggler gets a, a rematch uh, against Sheamus. However, this time it's a non-title matchup. What does this mean for Dolph Ziggler? Well, what was the outcome? Why are you asking me? Because Sheamus once again non -title. beats Dolph Ziggler. It was non-title. Doesn't but count. It, does, it does count because if they really want to push Dolph Ziggler, let him beat Sheamus somehow. It's a non-title match. Those are the matches the champion can lose and, and not be hurt. Your guy, Dolph Ziggler, I know he's part of your Nelson family. I think it's going to be a lot of disappointment for the wrestling fans. Alberto Del Rio, speaking of a disappointment. AVR, now this guy is world class. But you already knew that. Once again, now he makes Christian tap. He's been making, he made the U.S. champ, now the IC champ, all tap within one week. You know gold is coming around his way soon. Can you at least admit that Alberto Del Rio is a star? Absolutely. The he's highlight rich, of that matchup was not Christian tapping out, but Cody Rhodes' attack on Christian after the match. And see, Cody Rhodes, sneak attack. Christian is already down. You're just flawed. You're, you're, these, 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 these. It's exactly what we saw your, your on Your psyche's wrong. No, no, no. Christian has to come in while, Chris, while Cody comes in while Christian's down, beatered, battered, bruised because of ADR, and then he has to get his licks in. We didn't see him on Monday night, but we did see him on Friday night. Zack Ryder gets a defeat on Heath Slater. How could Zack Ryder not have been in Long Island on Monday on Raw? Well, because he was busy on, on Superstars. On TV, rather. He yeah. was busy on Superstars. <laughs> I mean, here's a prime example. During a the person main event, being picked by the Super Friends and their career being picked. But killed. he was, you know, it wasn't on Raw whatsoever, but during the main event on Raw, they're chanting for Zack Ryder. So what do you do? You put him on SmackDown. You know, it's, you know, Zack Ryder, he has the fan following. He has the potential. I'm not too sure why they don't use him properly. It was announced that Vicky Guerrero is going to be in charge of both Raw and SmackDown as the interim general manager next week. It looks like we're going to have that for the next several weeks leading up to the announcement of a permanent general manager. Now, you know, there. here would have been the right opportunity. You let... Dolph Ziggler beat Sheamus in a non-title match. Uh -huh. And then Vicky comes out on Raw or and or on SmackDown and then makes a title match. She stacks the deck against Sheamus to put Dolph in a great position to win. They drop the ball on SmackDown. The primetime players beat the Usos uh, after the Usos got themselves intentionally disqualified. Not the Usos, but the uh, primetime players got themselves intentionally disqualified Monday night on Raw. This time a matchup with the Usos. More tag team focus in WWE. Well, they're going to have to because, you know, eventually they're going to have three hours of uh, wrestling to fill. And they got to, you know, get that tag team division going because, like I said, now they're up to what? Three hours? Something like that. 180 minutes? A lot. A lot. Just shoot away from mine. That's Excuse this me? week's WWE SmackDown report, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to roll into this week's Ring of Honor report. And David Hero, you're going to be very surprised because we've got a special guest here. It's time oh, for your I, life intervention. intervention. I've already had one of those. And yes, indeed, it is time to go into this week's Ring of Honor report. I'd like to welcome back here to the studio, Truth Martini. And I'd like to thank you personally for coming down today because for years that I've, the years I've worked with this guy, David Hero, I've known that there's been a problem in his life, a deeply rooted problem, <laughs> one that required an intervention. Uh, and yeah. he's, he's been living by, you live by the book of truth in Ring of Honor Wrestling. He lives by the book of lies no, and spin no, no, and no, deception. No. I live by DHS. The book of lies. About the spoken word. What is that? Spoken word. David Hero has spoken. It's when something is unlike a, well, it's, I like a book, but more gospelish, I guess you could say. It's about things that are meant to be, meant to happen. Good things come to anything that has the DHS stamp of approval on it. Now, 
I'm a man of understanding. I understand many, many things. I understand I'm a life intervention expert. I understand it is my job to take my men to the top of Ring of Honor. I understand my eyes see, I understand my mouth talk, I understand my arms reach, I understand my ears hear. And contrary to popular belief, I actually understand the meaning of life. But the one thing, one thing I do not understand is what makes you think that what you say holds any merit. Now, I see what you're doing and actually admire it in a small way. Oh. But remember this, you meet thousands and they never touch you mentally or spiritually. Then you meet one and your life has changed forever. I am the one. And remember, there are three sides to every story. There's your side, there's their side, then there's the truth. <laughs> Where can I buy this book of truth? Is it on it's Amazon? For, oh, it's not for sale anymore. So it used to be, it used to be ninety nine ninety nine. I'll tell you a quick little story. A man told me one time, a hundred dollars for a book. Come on now. And I said, listen, you're not buying a book for a hundred dollars. You're buying a man's life. What took me thirty seven years to learn, you can learn that in four days. Then he wants to buy it, and I said, no, nah, I'm not selling it. How should truth members only? Ha! There you are. How does it feel to be in your place? I'm always July 14, 2012, week. Milwaukee, Turner Hall, Ring of Honor returns, as we saw just a moment ago, including you, obviously, Truth Martini. This Sunday, best in the world on pay-per-view, as we talked about earlier in this episode, uh, Ring of Honor, J July 14th. What do you have planned for Milwaukee? First time back for Ring of Honor in seven or eight years. It's a big night. I'll tell you this, after that night, Milwaukee will not be the same. The only same thing that will be happening is you'll keep eating cheese like you always do. Nice. <laughs> Tremendous. It's hummus. Tremendous. You know, are you busy uh, Saturday nights generally? Uh, we might, I might be looking for a replacement for him. Oh, I mean, I think. Give me a call. I like this. You I like know, this. You have my number. You know, this is going to be good, though. Now this one gets to pick a star of the week. And if he were smart, I know who his star of the week would be, but he's not so smart. Oh, so, it's... David, who is your star of the week this week? Well, there is only one true star of the week. True? Yes. Star of the week? It's myself. I have to right. put up with of you course. all week. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Super and duper. Truth Martini, thank you so much for joining us here oh, on this program. Thank you for... The life intervention of David Hero, he needed it. Not a problem. I just don't understand how you have to deal with this all the time. Finally, somebody who's on my side. I love it. I love it. Also want to thank uh, Unbreakable Michael Elgin for joining us earlier as well. Ring of Honor, best in the world on pay-per-view this Sunday from the Hammerstein Ballroom on Internet Pay-Per-View, uh, New York City. Ring of Honor Wrestling.com, ROH Wrestling.com, rather, for all the information on that. And uh, we will see you again right here on this very broadcast next Saturday night right here on My24 Milwaukee. For that one and Truth Martini, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime Saturday night.